Hey guys, Chris here with uh, camera girl Stephanie, my wife, and uh, we're gonna install the M Performance brake package. So we're gonna start in the rear here where I got the tire off, uh, wheel and tire off, and then um, work our way to the front, and then we'll do a power bleed at the end. It might be tomorrow, because um, it is late right now. We just put the kids to bed, and I uh, got the monitor out here. You're like an infectious disease doctor, <laughs> ready to do the work. All right guys, we're ready for the corona. <laughs> To remove the corona. <laughs> Alright guys, so we're gonna take off this uh, this caliper. There's gonna be two bolts in the back. Um, they are 16 millimeter bolts actually. So let's start with that. So it's gonna be all the way back here and we're just gonna loosen them for now are a little tough to get off and it's a bad positioning. Let's see here. Okay, so we loosen one. And we'll go down through the bottom. Again, there's 16 millimeter bolts and just the position is kind of hard to get to. Sometimes the mount is not break them free just enough all right so we loosen that up now what we want to do is grab our drip pan grab some box wrenches and we're gonna need 11 to loosen the the line up because we are replacing the line so grab your 11 and loosen that up there we go And it's uh, just a long process of just opening this uh, all the way up here. All right, so there it is. We got that out, drip it in the pan. So now everything is loose, pretty easy there. And we're gonna take off these bolts for the caliper now. So they are 16 millimeter, like we said earlier. Hard to see these bolts, so I won't really get a shot of them, but you'll see them when they come out. We have new hardware, so the kit comes with new bolts that are actually, so these um, 16 millimeter bolts are gonna be replaced with uh, brand new ones that have a dab of Loctite from factory. You see this one? All right, so now we're gonna get this one out and the caliper is gonna be free. There it is. There's the bolts. I'll keep them for when I sell these. Just work them out. Should just come right off here. Maybe we'll assist it with a little mallet, rubber mallet. And there it is. I'm gonna actually pull this line off because this is gonna be garbage. Try to drain the rest of the brake and put it to the side here. So, here we are, we got that off. We got this line dripping still, so that's fine. Next thing to do is to take off our, um, I think this is, I'm gonna double check, but a six millimeter Allen wrench and to take off this um, rotor. We're gonna go with new rotors. So that's that. Okay. And the way to take this off is try to move it around. If it doesn't come because it has some rust on it, just give it a whack all the way around. There it is. All right. There's our rotors. Line up the holes, line up your set screw. Everything is together here. Line them up. Get your set screw back in. That's six millimeter Allen wrench. Tighten it up here. Make sure it's on. And then just get it snug. We don't have to get it too tight because our lugs are gonna tighten this all up as much as possible. So that's all you need there. We're gonna use this um, 
It's a ceramic extreme brake parts lubricant and we want to put this where the contact between the pad and the piston. So here's how we're gonna do this. This pad has contact with the piston here. You wanna make sure you use this lubricant there. So what we're gonna do is just make a little circle around where the piston goes. That's one. And then same thing on the other side. When the piston makes contact, we're gonna make a little circle of lubricant. And that's all the lubricant we're gonna need for this project. Actually, before I set these pads in, let's go ahead and set it up. And it's easier that way for us. So we're gonna put this in position. Remember, bleeder up. If the bleed, guys, if the bleeder is not up, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get air stuck in here at the top and you can't bleed it because the bleeder is on the bottom. So make sure you do this the right in orientation. If the bleeder is up, the air will rise, the air bubbles will rise and come out the bleeder as you bleed them. So bleeder up always. You can, you can easily reverse these if you're not careful. So here's our new hardware kit. It comes with our new calipers or the whole, really the whole set. This one's kind of off on its own here. So there they are, and they have a little dab of Loctite from factory, and uh, these are the ones we're going to be putting back on. The old ones we're going to save for whoever buys our brake kit. All right, guys. So pro tip: we got new lines, new braided lines. We want to get this started first. So we took our plug out earlier. We're going to get this started up, and it's a 14 millimeter on this guy. We're going to get it on, and we're going to get it about hand tight and we want to do that because it'll be easier to actually connect it and not have to worry about that later and we're gonna get our bolts and kind of get it in there first and I'm gonna just use my guy here to give me a quick tighten up. It doesn't have to be all the way yet. All right, there's that. Now you wanna come on this side of me. All right guys, so now we're working here on this side. I don't know if you wanna stay low. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put in our brake pads. So one brake pad's gonna go in here. Pad's gonna be facing the rotor. Piston's gonna be facing the back. Same thing on this side. Just slide, slide them right on in. It's pretty easy. Now we got the pins. So what happens is pin goes like this. From the back is gonna be the big side into the small side where the small part of the pin goes. So big sides, you're always gonna go in from the back forward. Then we got our spring right here, so pretty simple. Get one started, we'll start on the bottom. Go through the uh, brake pad, through the second brake pad, and out to where you see the tip right there. It's not fully set yet. Next is gonna be spring in, like this, under. You're gonna hold that spring down while you come in with a second one. Run through the brake pad, under, over the spring as you push the spring down a little bit. Kinda hard to do, but you got it. I mean, it's not that hard once you get it in. Then you're gonna go through the next brake pad. So make sure you push that spring in as you do this. It makes it a lot easier. And there's the head. So we're set up right now. We will use a uh, a punch to punch these through 
to where they're showing on this side and then they're in for good. But first, let's set up our brake line here. So we're gonna push this out and connect it right back to this 11 millimeter guy right here. Try to get it as finger tight as possible. And then go with your 11 millimeter and just start tightening it down. So we're in, it's getting, whoop. try not to drop your tools inside of corrosive brake fluid. And just tighten this down. It takes a couple, a few turns here before it gets tight. And then our brake fluid will stop flowing. All right, it's getting tight. And what we wanna do is get tight and then do about a half a turn to a full turn, depending. I feel like that's gonna be good there. All right, wipe down all brake fluid. Do not leave that stuff on, on anything. The brake uh, calipers have resistance, but just make sure you get it all cleaned up and they're ceramic coated, as you guys saw in my first part one of this video. Okay, next, I'm going to take my 16 and I'm gonna tighten our um, 16 millimeter that holds on the actual <laughs> caliper all the way. So what I like to do is just go hand tight. I don't have the exact specs, but I've done many of these before and uh, usually hand tight to your strength is gonna be pretty darn good. But you know, spe torque specs is always good too. All right, so that completes that. It's, it's not hard at all, it just takes time. Uh, what we're gonna do now, which is the final step, is get rid of this. We're gonna take our punch, a simple nail punch here, just a craftsman nail punch. It's actually a wide nail punch, and a regular hammer because you need a little bit of, of pressure here. And you're gonna go to your pin and you're just gonna drive it in and you'll see how they come right up to the front here. See how that pin came all the way up? You need that pin to do, this pin to do the same thing you did here. This, and we're in. That's it guys, I mean, it's simple as that. There's our old bolts, back, and we will chalk the back tire just to, to be safe and pull the e-brake. So here, just need to do one. Go, pull our e-brake. Got one loose. Here's a second. Again, mount really helps. All right, so those are loose. Now, same thing as before. Here we got uh, a uh, sensor. Let's loosen up all that sensor here. So we got one here. It's gonna be two. And then we got a a box right here where we have our sensor. Stored. Let's pull this one to here. There's, so there's three locations where it's connected. And then we're gonna take our, our pick tool that I always use here to get into the harness, pull it up and uh, remove it that way because those finger pressure things sometimes just don't work. So let's try that here. There's the harness. This is out. 
and I can just remove that completely. All right. Next is gonna be same situation here. We're gonna remove this braided line. can kind of twist it off of this this guy here and yes this one is painted because it was just gray and I tried to match the blue for the time being so just kind of back it off of this braid I mean this uh, line brake line try to hold it so it doesn't fall it is kind of heavy so support support it well we're gonna do the rotors You got your six millimeter in here. Loosen this up. This rotor is already free, so no need to bang it around with the mallet. Take that off, keep your set screw. And we're gonna replace the shields here. So let's find out what size we need. Looks like a 10. the bigger brake shield. So we got 10 here. We're gonna break these open. You want to get it started here. Kind of difficult because it doesn't have a swivel. <laughs> What's that? I'm just looking at a meme on my phone about Corona. <clears throat> Pretty funny. My camera girl's looking at memes Sorry. about Corona. All right, so let's take our 14 here. Try to clear out your space. Don't get your new brake calipers messed up. Get it hand tight. Okay. Now we're gonna put it up here and get a couple bolts in it. I believe our new bolts are a little bit different. Like I was saying earlier, for this front, they gave us the Don't forget to make sure the bleeder's up. Yeah, oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's true. Look at me. I Look can't at your camera, girl. <laughs> All right, guys, so big mistake here. You got the wrong side. So take this back off. Look at this, guys. I got caught. <laughs> I got caught. You said it was easy to do that. So. I got caught. I do that. I caught it before you screwed the whole thing You on. know what? Leave this one on. Just get the other side. I 
take it. Thanks, babe. All right. So, let's do it right the first time, guys. Um, so, camera girl caught a mistake. We're supposed to have the bleeders up. So, you know, that would have been a long, would have been a long process to get it all back off <laughs> when I was bleeding them, switch them around. And I'll be honest with you guys, I've done that before. And uh, couldn't figure out what was going on. I think I told you guys in the other video, I had to find out the hard mm -hmm. way. These are a pain to get on because there's no swivel. You gotta just get it on. So here, let me get this going here. All right, tighten it by hand. Get it as, as tight as you can here. We don't want to bleed them and find out there's a leak. Just hand tight, don't have to go crazy. All right, now, now we're back to where camera girl left off. We're gonna put these on. Here's our new bolts. There's no Loctite on these, surprisingly, but they are big guys, so. We'll have to probably put that on. Anyway, let's put this on. Finally, back to this step. Get you uh, get the lube on both sides where the the piston is gonna touch because there's two pistons per side here. There's four pistons, so get that lubricated. Take our sensor, put it inside your brake pad to where the nub is facing the brake pad itself, and just stick it on in there. There it is. So see how it slid in right there? My camera girl is not helping. There it is. She's watching YouTube. Videos of ours probably, I doubt it. All right, so now we're gonna put this pad in with the jelly face and the pistons. Slide it in. We're gonna put this in last here. Then we're gonna take this other one, and again, jelly facing the piston, pad facing the rotor, of course. Let's go with this guy here. Make sure you're getting this. We're gonna put, we got a few contact points here. We got one down here, one up here. We can attach it to our sensor here. Stick it in the box, which mine's loose and I will get a new box eventually. Got our new braided line connected here, goes through, loops into our connector that holds that part there. Comes in the back and attaches to our caliper. We got our brakes in, our brake pads, springs in, everything's in there. Our sensor's right here.
Hey guys, it's um, next morning here and we are about to do a bleed. All right, so we're gonna attach this to the reservoir, get it nice and tight here. Feels pretty good. And we're gonna pump this up to 15 PSI. All right guys, so we're at 15 PSI right here, which is right up there, 15. All right guys, so we're gonna start bleeding and we're gonna start with the rear passenger then rear driver, then front dri uh, passenger and front driver. So we're gonna work uh, from furthest away from the uh, reservoir all the way in. So here we go. We got the bleeder up here. We're gonna take a 11 millimeter wrench, uh, box wrench here. So let's go ahead and release some more. Let the bubbles come out. We got a few bubbles coming, so let's just keep going. All right, we're seeing nothing but steady fluid now, so let's close that up. All right, so here we are on the opposite side. Bleeders up here, let's get that off. Coming through it, I know it's hard to see, but we got bubbles coming out, small amounts. It's getting less and less, so that's a good sign. All right, we're looking good there. Let's go ahead and shut her down and try it again. Let that pressure build back up. We're also gonna check our reservoir real quick. Let's go check the pressure bleeder and the reservoir. So we're still at 15 PSI, a little bit less maybe, but a half PSI shy. There we go, 15. We got, we got fluid in here, so we're good. We got fluid in there, we're good. Everything's tight. Let's give her one more shot here. See if we can get a little more out of it. All right, so we're gonna open her up one more time. Couple more bubbles there. And we're running clear. So let's shut her down. All right, so we're here at the front uh, passenger and we got two bleeders, one here, one here. I'm gonna start on the inside and work my way out. A lot of air bubbles as you can see. I'll try to get that camera to where we can see what's going on here. You can see inside this tube how much air is coming out. All right, looks like air is slowly stopping there. We don't see too many bubbles. Good sign. All right, let's see what we got. I'm gonna crack it one more time. Some more air coming out here. So it's coming out in spurts, which means there's a good amount of line, uh, air in the line. All right, let's close this one down. Wait a second. Open her back up. A little more air, and you can feel kind of pulses from the air. A little more air here. Check our bleeder, check our power bleeder. All right, we still 
still have fluid, we still have pressure. Pumped it up a couple of times just to be sure. We're gonna open her up one more time here. So a little more air coming. All right, I think we're done on this side for now. Like I said, we can always go double check everything later with uh, running one more, one more cycle of bleed. All right, let's go back to the front side here. This would be pretty obvious for, for you guys of what's going on. Let's get it on. Can open her up. And you can see the air bubbles coming through. So just continue bleeding until it runs clean. There's more air. All right, let's close it. Open it one more time. There's some more air. Close it. More air. Close it. Wait for that air to build back up to the top. And let me check my bleeder again. This would be pretty obvious for, for you guys of what's going on. Let's get it on. Can open her up. And you can see the air bubbles coming through. So just continue bleeding until it runs clean. There's more air. All right, let's close it. Open it one more time. There's some more air. Close it. More air. Close it. Wait for that air to build back up to the top. And let me check my bleeder again. We're gonna release pressure just slowly. All right, that's done there. Next, let's open our cap all right let's get that off of here so we don't drip all right let's put our cap back on 
and see if we can uh, pump up the brakes and our reservoir is full. So let's see if we can pump up the brakes a little bit. We're pushing the brake and it slowly depresses, 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 like in, 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 in. Um, that means you have air in the line. So, I, like I said, I've done a lot of brake changes on all my cars. I've never went to a mechanic to do brake change, uh, brake pad change, and you have to sometimes, if you have to change a, a caliper or something, you have to bleed. So I've bled many of brakes, I've changed many of brakes, and what you want, really want to make sure of is one, is that you know, you're, you're bled through, and two, you come to the car and you start pumping that brake, and then you kind of stand on the brake, not stand, but hold the brake. If it slowly just depresses, 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 that means there's still air in the line. Not a lot, but there's still some in there. Now, if you've done that many a times, you go back to bleeding, pumping the brake, bleeding, pumping the brake, and it's still not getting pressure. Worst case scenario, you have air in the ABS system, and you have to go get a mechanic to uh, start up the ABS pump while they're flush, while they're doing the bleeding, um, a power bleeding, so that way they can get the air out of the ABS. So that's worst case scenario, and it's not very expensive. Like I said, it's probably about a hundred bucks. Um, also, before you take off in the car, you make sure you pump your brake. If you don't pump your brake, guys, and you take off, you will not stop. You're gonna have to pump those brakes really, really quickly to stop. Hey guys, so we completed the brakes. Um, I ended up bleeding them twice, and um, it worked out pretty good. I've actually went and drew, drove the car around, and I got that coating off of the, uh, the actual um, rotors. So here's what they look like now. And then the rears. And that's where it looks pretty good. Wasn't sure how red was gonna look on it, but I like it. Um, it took total hours, I would say three uh, with the bleeding. And since I went for an extra bleed, which I just did that um, just to be uh, safe, uh, it was probably like three and a half hours total, but um, wasn't wasn't bad so there it is if you like this video please like and subscribe this really supports my channel and uh, we'll keep the videos coming